talk about what we've learned 10 years on, because I said its impact still being felt. Uh, with me, Stephen Jones, who's the Chief Executive of UK Finance, and also with me, Fran Boat, who's from Positive Money. Morning to you both. Um, Stephen, let me start with you, because I've touched on it with Justin there about, you know, what have we learned 10 years on? Could all of this happen again? Could it? I think the reforms that have been enacted over the last 10 years are very, very substantial in terms of making sure that banks are much, much stronger, they are much more resilient to financial shock and, and really redesigning the way we think about conduct uh, in terms of the responsibilities of individual bankers, um, what they are required to do uh, and, and how they are allowed to sell uh, to customers. My, my concern is that we've spent 10 years building a much, much safer system in the United Kingdom for the things that went wrong 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, and I think it's very important that we don't just look in the rearview mirror, we need to look forward to the new risks that emerge. And I think the new risks that are emerging that we all need to be cognizant of, not just in banking, really relate to cyber mm. data, uh, the new world of economic crime. Mm. Uh, and our, certainly our focus now is very much helping the system to be safer, more transparent, uh, and more resilient uh, in this new data IT driven world. Um, Fran, you're listening to that. Mm. Um, Stephen says it's safer, it's more resilient. Mm. The lessons have been learned. You don't agree though, do you? No, I don't think so. I think we've got to remember, 10 years ago, banks here were bailed out to the tune of £130 billion. And what we've seen since then uh, is, you know, the same system, basically. And we've seen a failure to properly reform banking so that it serves the rest of the economy, not just itself. It puts, you know, global financial markets first, the rest of the economy second. And rather than reforming, we saw austerity, we saw huge public sector cuts, which are still going on. And we've calculated the average household lost out by 23 thousand pounds since the crash and uh, we've seen you know bankers bonuses continued uh, and today we're launching a calculator actually so calculator so your viewers at home can calculate how much they've lost out since the crisis uh, what I am owed yeah and you're right I mean there's so many elements of and how it's impacted our life day to day have we learned any lessons from it and crucially could that happen again well with me two people who can probably explain a little bit more uh, Fran Boyt is with us she's from the campaign group positive money uh, and Stephen Jones, the Chief Executive of UK Finance. Morning to you both. Um, Fran, maybe let me start with you in terms of how this works. Because 10 years on, a decade on, some would say we've still not learnt the lessons. This could quite happen again quite easily. Absolutely. You know, 10 years on, we've seen the failure to reform the banking system, resulting in austerity, public sector cuts, and people's wages have stagnated and declined. Um, we've brought out a, a calculator today where people can find out how much they're owed um, from the financial crash, and they can write to Philip Hammond. And the average household is £23,000 worse off. So we're going to be um, in the city on Saturday, which is the exact anniversary of the Lehman Brothers collapse saying that actually 10 years enough's enough we actually need proper reform now and we're going to be calling for a whole series of, of regulations from um, properly ending too big to fail to a financial transaction tax um, to looking at how we need to stop the um, the levels of private debt which again result from the, the banking system so not enough has, has happened and we've got a lot more work to do. Um, Stephen let's talk about that concept of too big to fail that idea that our biggest financial institutions were simply too big too important to let collapse that is point, uh, part of the failure of all of this isn't it that if a business isn't working it should be allowed to collapse. Absolutely and I think a lot of the last 10 years has been uh, designed to ensure that reforms are put in place such that no bank is too big to fail. Um, first of all, you want to get the banks into a position where they are extremely unlikely to fail. And so there are four or five times as much capital held by banks relative to the loans that they grant, uh, much more cash held on their balance sheets. Uh, secondly, you want to make sure that the senior managers of banks are much more personally and individually accountable. That's the purpose of the senior managers regime, which now has criminal sanctions attached to the extent that managers act uh, in a criminal way in terms of managing the companies. And thirdly, all banks now have to have what are called living wills or uh, they have to have essentially pre-planned what would happen so that they can be wound down in an orderly way uh, in a manner that the 
regulators um, will be able to take that action if that proves to be necessary. Yeah, and, and Fran, I mean, when you hear that, and the economy, not just the banking system, has been on the life support machine. Absolutely. We know that interest rates have been at record mm. lows. We've yeah. seen that there's been emergency money pumped yeah. into the financial yeah. system. All of that seemingly has failed to make much difference. Yeah, I mean, we still have a broken economic system, which very much is, um, you know, the banking system, the huge financial sector we have in the in the city of London um, is a big part of that. And although we've seen regulation, it's very much been in, in terms of, OK, how do we make a bank fail more easily rather than how do we make the banking system actually work for the economy? You know, what we should have learned in 2008 is that we can't have this oversized financial sector serving the global financial markets and, and making the rich richer at the same time as it not undermining the rest of the economy. Mm. And, you know, we've done a recent polling that shows um, over two thirds of the UK public think that banks don't work in the interests of society. Yeah. And that's the case. You know, since the crash, uh, we hoped that banks would start lending to the productive economy. They don't. We still see around 10% of lending. The, the vast majority goes into the finance sector and property markets. That doesn't work for most people and most businesses in this country, and that has to change. Mm. Uh, well, let's talk about all of that impact and what it's had uh, on us since then. With me, two people who uh, know a bit about it. Sarah is a personal finance expert and Fran is from the campaign group Positive Money. Morning to you both. Morning. Um, Sarah, I mean, we heard from Justin, look, you know, lessons have been learned, but we still feel the effects, don't we? And we're feeling it in our pockets. Yes, absolutely. I mean, particularly for one of the things is for savers, so who have had pretty much a lost decade. So what happened immediately after the crash was that um, interest rates went from 5% um, to 0.5%, which just destroyed savings rates. So it meant that if you had £10,000 saved in an average account um, before, the, before the crash, um, then that would be worth about £8,670 today. So that's fallen in, 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 in its real value. So it's really been a difficult time for savers. For borrowers, obviously, it's become cheaper to borrow, but that means that we are loading up on borrowing, so that you, you find that we're now actually borrowing more than we were um, when, when the crisis hit. So, so I think people are a lot more vulnerable. Um, the, the, the savings ratio has dropped, so there's, um, it's dropped a, a record low of 4.1%. So we're sitting on less money than we were. We're borrowing up to the hill. So it does put people in a vulnerable position if something was to go wrong again. Yeah. Yeah, and speaking of that vulnerable position, Fran, I mean, you know, we're told constantly that there's more regulation in place, that mm. things have changed, that, you know, we won't make the same mistakes. Mm. But sometimes you look around and a lot of the familiar things, the hallmarks of the first crash, are back. Absolutely. We haven't significantly changed the system. You know, Ten years ago, the banks crashed the economy, and as a result, ordinary people have paid the price um, through political decisions. It's a political choice to do austerity and massive cuts to public services. You know, unless we actually say, let's make banks work for society, we're going to sleepwalk into another crisis. The economy isn't working for most people, and we need a serious conversation about how to change things. So Positive Money is part of a bigger campaign that's going to be campaigning in the City of London this Saturday to mark 10 years on and say enough's enough. Yeah, uh, Fran, Sarah, thanks very much for, for, um, for that.